assuming one of the goals of wideband driver design is to minimize the peaks in frequency response as the bending modes, self-resonance or standing waves come into effect. What tools are in the driver designer's arsenal to minimize this? Right, well, it's a, it's a very good question because um, you do need a degree of flex, of, you need a degree of flexing in the cone. Um, um, uh, in, in order to allow it to, to pass the sound wave over its surface, if it's completely rigid and extremely, say it's high mass and completely rigid, then uh, the losses involved are so great that you're not really going to get any real meaningful sound from it at all. So a designer is always having to sort of uh, make a compromise between, between um, the lightness of the material, the low mass, and the shape of the cone, and um, the, uh, the actual profile of the cone against um, the relative instability of producing something so, uh, so shallow and somewhat delicate. So I'll grab this cone here and um, so this is, this is a, uh, an Alpair 10 cone, I think. No, sorry, it's an Pluver 11 cone, I believe. And um, I don't know if we can demonstrate it on the camera there, but actually it is quite rigid. Uh, as I sort of twist it, 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 it's, it, it, it's, uh, it's 0.15 material is actually producing something that's quite stable. But I can actually, with a bit of effort, I can actually bend it. In fact, I can bend it this way and uh, you can see the edges coming up. Similarly, you can do that for other materials, including uh, composites and um, uh, fiber materials and paper and glass fiber and so on. They'll all have a degree of bend. So the, the, the art and the science involved, is, 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 which is about half and half, is about making that cone of a particular profile and shape that allows you to uh, have an acceptable degree of, of, of what we're really talking about is distortion. That's, that's you know, a sound production that's not in the original recording. Um, that's pleasing to the ear, because what we should remember is that, that, that everybody's hearing is different. And um, certainly, along with many other designers, I have produced drivers in the past where the cone has been so so stiff and so rigid it's produced a relatively flat response. I produced uh, a, um, a woofer, woofer number no. six it was called uh, some years ago now that had a very very stable response and um, sold in reasonable numbers but didn't sell in huge numbers because possibly because the sound response was so benign it had such a um, physically flat response relative to its competition. Um, it, some of the reports we got back from end users was great driver, but lacked character, was somewhat, was somewhat disengaging, if you like. So because all human beings have their own particular perception, no human being in this world perceives sound exactly the same as the next. And because there's no absolutely, no absolute uh, specification for perfect sound, for good sound, um, every transducer or every loudspeaker designer has to come up with a set of characteristics, um, including the shape of the cone, including the, the size of the coil, and all these different things to produce a mix, a mix of properties that, that he or she hopes is appealing to the end user. And in Mark Audio's case, we prioritise the, the uh, sort of wider sound spectrum. So, so uh, a Mark Audio driver can operate in low, medium and high range, um, where you're always open to a little bit more variability in the sound response. Rather than sacrificing the bandwidth uh, and producing a narrower, narrower band driver uh, with a relatively uh, flat response or flatter response. Each to their own. Some people, um, perhaps say the people who build 
speaker systems very much from a point of view of, um, of the technical side um, rather than building the product, building the, the, the speaker system for, um, for, for musical use in their home. Um, they will probably more concentrate on, on a mix of drivers that have very specific characteristics. Um, it will be fair to say I've always tended to build drivers that I hope have listener appeal, that they, they actually they have a, a musical quality to them um, that um, makes them easy to listen to and makes them very easy to put into a box and get a, a decent result from. Um, so, um, and, and indeed, the people I've known in the past that have, that have, that have been driver designers uh, have uh, operated in the same way. So, for example, typically uh, in a Mark Audio driver, you'll see a lift uh, for the high range so that whenever the speaker sits in your home, um, you, can, you, you can hear still hear the high range whether you're sitting directly in front of the, the unit or whether you're sitting off to the side of it because that lift in the high range will allow you more flexibility in room positioning, for example. Um, so that immediately tells you that a flat response is, is, that, is not desirable for many people because they can't always sit directly in front of the, the speaker. So, so all in all, um, you have to weigh up the properties of the material, the low mass, the lightness, how easy you can form it, against the type of listening that you think people will enjoy. And that is very much, um, that's an ongoing process for all manufacturers. And um, certainly in our case, um, we, we, we try to produce drivers that will that will uh, allow um, end users the most flexibility when it comes to um, building their boxes, building their systems, and physically putting them in, in the rooms. We must remember that every room's different. Um, as soon as somebody puts furnishings in of their own particular uh, choice, curtains, wall hangings, you name it, the characteristic of that room changes from the next person and so there's no manufacturer no audio speaker manufacturer in the world can predict with any degree of real accuracy exactly what sort of uh, environment their product will go into so you can't always build a, uh, and shouldn't necessarily build a speaker driver that has a very very precise set of characteristics has a particularly flat response or has a particularly non-flat response you've got to build build it in such a way that the type of performance it gives will 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 please as many people as you can and um, typically in a mark audio driver that means the the um, the cone needs to be low mass so it can be so it can be oscillated efficiency for the low range and, and wide enough uh, and shallow enough uh, profile that it can it can deal with the medium and the high range but at the same time relatively rigid so you can you can limit the the uh, the undesirable effects of uh, bending and distortion that you get from this type of transducer.